do you have a favorite cemetery to walk? I'm not talking about the one near your house where you let your dog go on a rampage and do its business on somebody's mortal remains. I'm talking about a cemetery that you walk because it causes you to reflect. Maybe on your own mortality, but also maybe on history itself. I'm in my favorite cemetery in western Massachusetts that's got some kind of stature, and that would be the cemetery here in Old Deerfield. And this cemetery is really neat. It's very old. It's got burials that date back to 1670. And there's all kinds of different stone art here. And to me, a guy that's into the bigger moments of history, it's got memory of two attacks on the community of Deerfield that are of historical note and a couple of different, what you might call, more minor massacres. Here's the site of the dead killed in the great 1704 raid by French and their Kahnawaga and native allies who came down out of Canada in that frigid winter of 1704 when there was about 10 feet of snow on the field surrounding the walled and stockaded community of Deerfield. And the people of the community had basically been involved in what we call Queen Anne's War for more than two years, and they had seen hide nor hair of the French or their Indian allies. And as the snowdrifts piled up against the stockade, they had not taken the precautions of shoveling and removing that snow. They were a little bit light in their guards and the guard towers. And on the other side of the fields that you see below us is the Deerfield River, which is a road that will bring you right up to the Hoosick River, which leads down to the Hudson and then straight up to French Canada. And here, 1704, a war party of French and their native allies caught the community sleeping. And when it was all done, 48 men, women, and children were victims killed in the raid, and another 160 carried away into captivity. And by the way, you can see that big building right there that's taking away from your view behind that big cherry tree. Oh, that's the Deerfield Hockey Arena. You know, life goes on. Deerfield Academy here is an extremely high-end prep school. The King of Jordan and his father both went to Deerfield Academy along with a lot of other fairly famous people. And, uh, you know, they, they have the land and this is what they put up here. Probably much to the chagrin of the Deerfield Historical Society. I can imagine it's not a good backdrop for the mound of the dead of 1704. But the people of Deerfield were sleeping on the night of February 29th when from the other side of the Deerfield River, which is on the other side of the field down here, right, you can imagine a war party of 200 plus French and native allies. And they're watching the sentry in the stockade nodding. And when they see him go to sleep and stop moving, they come across the field. Now, the people of the settlement had not removed the snow from in front of the stockade. And so what ends up happening is the native people walk right up the snow drifts and literally step into the village. Can you imagine walking the 200 plus miles through the howling wilderness of 1704 New England from Deerfield, Mass? Northwestern Mass, all the way up through what is now Vermont and New York to Montreal, to Kahnawaga. That's what they did. And one of the captives that made that trek, there were 160 of them, is John Williams, who's buried right here. You can see his stone. And John Williams is a pretty famous man by the standard of New England at that time. John Williams had been sent to Deerfield. Now his daughter Eunice was captured on that awful night and led away to Canada. And uh, she survived, but to Williams, she may as well have died. 
because she ended up marrying a Catholic. Now, he is a most Puritan congregational minister. The idea that his daughter married a Catholic must have broke his heart. It meant that the two of them would be forever severed in his mind. Because Catholics, of course, can't go to heaven. Only the devout Puritan can, the elect. And uh, it, it, it was, you know, he never forgave her. She came back to try to try to talk to him. He wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, but she never returned to the fold of the Mother Church. Those are fun days, huh? The other thing that Williams is known for is he was an anti-vaxxer back at the time when the smallpox raged through Massachusetts every 12 years. And a guy from out east named Zebul Boylston had come up with the notion of vaccinating, well at the time it was called an inoculation, inoculating people against the smallpox. And it was very controversial. You were taking some of the live pustule and you were scratching it into the flesh of the person that was being inoculated. And you develop a small case of the disease. And our friend John Williams was completely against it, wrote multiple treaties, gave sermons against it, and ultimately was part of a movement that led to riots in Boston. And it wasn't until the Mathers, Cotton and Increase, came out in favor of the vaccination that we see sanity come to Massachusetts and people began getting the vaccinations and avoiding that most awful of deaths, death by smallpox. I can't think of a worse one. But Old Deerfield Cemetery with the Berkshires to the west, the sun going down, it's really cool to walk around out there and there's so much more that I didn't tell you about because you're going to probably want to get out of here yourself and check it out.